Hola, bonjour, bienvenue, and welcome to Creative Cooking. My name is Nicole Braxton, and I'm super excited to be here with you today. Now, if you've been tuning in, you've been traveling the world with us one bite at a time. Along with traveling, it's super important that we also take care of our health. So today, we'll be focusing on diabetic-friendly meals that are good for your body, and it could also be good for your mind, body, and spirit if it is incorporated within your diet. So for the dishes we'll be making today, we will be making lentil soup, quinoa, and cubed tofu. So please join us as we first make our first dish, which is lentil soup. The ingredients for our lentil soup include two cups of lentils, five to six cups of water, one chopped onion, two cloves of garlic minced, your favorite fresh herbs, cilantro, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes, one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of curry powder, and one tablespoon of cumin seeds. Now get ready, we're gonna make a delicious lentil soup. So thank you for tuning in. And before we get into that, if you've been watching previous episodes or if this is your first time, just want to share with you, I started a wellness organization it's called Around the World in Seven Days. And one of the key things that we like to do is share health information. And we do this through our workshops. So it's related to our episode because we also focus on diabetes. And in different workshops and support groups that we host, we like to share different meals. And so this is one of the meals we're going to be sharing today. And one of the key things that has inspired us to share and focus on diabetes is the key fact that there's 26 million Americans currently with diabetes and 79 million Americans that are diabetic. This is a huge trend and a huge issue that is within our society. So it's important that we take care of the different causes and not the effects. So let's get started on our lentil soup. To start us off, we're going to take our six cups of water and pour it and let this boil. Okay, now while the water is boiling, we will go and chop up our veggies. So we'll start off with an onion. Cut it straight down the middle. Okay, take off the skin. I really love having onions in my dishes because it adds so much flavor. And it, the more flavor that you have in your dishes, it's really good to add fresh herbs because the less salt you'll need. You don't need to, to supplement your flavor with salt and over-processed products if you can have really flavorful, fresh items. So as we've talked about in previous episodes, when we're cutting our onion, we're just going straight down. Then we'll make a cut right in the middle. And then we're going to do this rocking motion back and forth, just like this. Okay, so we'll do the rocking motion. This is a really effective way to cut an onion. It saves time and it just gets to the point. You're able to cook your onions effectively. And if you notice you want to chop it a little bit more, you can just do this. Okay, so we have our onion. And do the other side as well. Along with onion, we're gonna put some fresh garlic in there and curry and coriander. coriander. So coriander is something that you can optionally put in there if you like. With all of the recipes, it's really key that you tailor it and make it your own. So this is a good baseline for you to make your favorite dish. So for lentil soup, the great thing about the lentils is that it also, um, with beans in general, they have protease inhibitors inside of them, which helps to slow the progression progression of carcinogens within the body. So it's really great to start incorporating beans. And also, it breaks down slower into your body, so um, your blood sugar levels do not spike as quickly as they would with other items. So it's really great to start incorporating beans. And lentils are a type of beans that I like to incorporate. So I'm just chopping my onion. All right, so we have that done. The next thing that we're gonna go on and put in is 
First we're going to start our skillet with a little bit of olive oil. So the water is boiling, make sure it's turned all the way up. And we're going to let the olive oil heat. So in previous episodes, we talked that extra virgin olive oil is better for you because it's less refined. It's more close to its natural state as opposed to just regular um, olive oil. So when going to the store, if you're going to use olive oil, it's better to use extra virgin olive oil. In regards to cooking, with any recipe that we have, if you would like to cook with water, water is the healthiest way to cook. You can also cook with water instead of olive oil. And we'll put some chopped onions on the skillet along with some fresh garlic, which we shared in previous episodes. It's really good for building the immune system and it really helps to um, incorporate great flavor inside your dishes. So we'll put some garlic in there as well. Okay, wow, it's coming, uh-oh, okay. So we're gonna let that just saute a bit. Now, in previous episodes, we shared that a mirepoix has, is a base. And in the mirepoix, there's onions, there's celery, and there are carrots. So at this point, if you decide you'd like to make a mirepoix, which we can do today, you can do that as well. Or you can keep it, as simply stated, with onions and garlic. If you'd like to add carrots, you can. And just in case, if you decide to do that, I'll show you how it's done. So with all of our recipes, it's very important to tune in to our episodes so you can get ideas on how to dress the recipe up to your liking. So we'll take the carrot, we'll just chop it in half as such. All righty. And depending on what size you'd like your carrots to be, you can chop it that way. And then I'm just going to add it together and I'm going to do that motion we talked about, the rocking motion. All right, carrots have beta carotene in them which is really good for your body, can impact your vision in a positive way. And as we've talked about, the more color you have in your dish, it shows the different types of nutrients you're getting. So look at that deep, rich orange. Look in, it's really, really good. It's great to incorporate all different colors into your food. So we're gonna put the carrots inside of our dish, okay? So right now we have some carrots, we have some onions. Oops, don't do that at home. We have some carrots, we have some onions, and now, we're going to add some celery, and this makes a mirepoix. Okay. So now I just like to cut it into strips. Alrighty. So now I have three strips right here. All righty, and I'm going to just dice it. Doing the same rocking motion. This really makes a great base. One thing that we found in our support groups is that people are willing to try food that's healthy as long as it has flavor. And that has been one of my biggest struggles is how can you have food that's healthy and also delicious at the same time? And really it all revolves around flavor and how things are seasoned. So it's important to use fresh ingredients because you'll be able to get more flavor from it. So like fresh herbs and spices, those are great things to incorporate. So I wanna ask you, and just think about this question, what is the difference between an herb and a spice? Just think about it. Don't worry, I can't hear you thinking, but I'll answer the question. I know it's rhetorical, but the difference between herbs and spices is herbs are the leafy green part of the plant. And 
That includes everything. So for example, like parsley, cilantro, those are herbs. And spices is the other components of the plant. For example, cinnamon is made from cinnamon bark of a tree. So that is a spice. So you have cumin, coriander, all those different things are considered spices. All right, so now the best time to put in your different spices is at the base um, in this mirror broth. So I sauteed my veggies. You can see right there the sauteed veggies. Okay, and now I'm going to put in the different spices. So I have some cumin, and cumin is an amalgamation, which is a mixture of different spices, and it has all different components and textures, not textures, but different flavors to it because it's a combination of different spices. And if you can see it starting, this is, when you put your different spices at this point, you allow the oils to be released with, from the spice. So this is a great thing to start incorporating. Okay, so now I put some uh, curry, Curry powder, you can put that in. And these are also cumin seeds. If you look right there, cumin seeds are great to start incorporating. Alrighty. And now I'm gonna pour my lentils in to the water. And as the lentils are boiling, you can put uh, some salt just to taste. So that can allow the flavor to come out from just like a pinch or two. All right, so I'm gonna turn it down. You wanna make sure you don't overcook your spices, just enough for the oils to be released. So this is our base, and a little bit of red chili pepper flakes, so I'll put that over there. Now, if you don't like spicy, I don't recommend that, but you can switch it up and see what you like. Okay. All right, so the oils are releasing from that. And now all you do is you let your lentils boil for about 30 minutes. And when they're done, what you do is you pour your mirepoix. You can look right now and take a good look in this and see all the different spices inside of that. You can see all the flavor. The key is to season this as if this is all the flavor that you are gonna get in your lentils. So you wanna have a lot of seasoning in this. If you want, you can put some salt. You can also put some chicken style seasoning in it as well. Put that in there. And it's important too, to make sure you give it a taste and see if it's how you like it. Wow, that is really good. It's full of flavor, very fresh, delicious. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is pour this into my lentils. Okay, and stir it around. And you can also put some different fresh herbs in there as well, like cilantro. And you're gonna let that cook for a little bit. And as that is cooking, we're gonna go to our next recipe, which is our quinoa. The next recipe calls for two cups of quinoa, four cups of water, one zucchini dice, two teaspoons of chicken style seasoning, one pack of tofu, two asparagus cut into four sections, one cup of mushroom slice, a half red onion dice, three tablespoons of Bragg's aminos, one clove of garlic mince, and salt to taste. So when making our quinoa, our first step we'll do is we'll take about three to four cups of water and we'll pour it into our basin. Okay. And we'll get some quinoa. Quinoa is an excellent thing to start incorporating into your diets because it's very healthy for you. It's really great for diabetes. It breaks down slower into to the body, and also quinoa really absorbs the different flavors that you put in it. So it's very easy to season because it, it's not so, so bland. If you see it, it's a really great thing to incorporate. 
it's, uh, it's not bland, and when you put additional seasonings to it, it really just soaks up the flavor and the dish really becomes your own. So the water, it's starting to boil, so I will pour in the quinoa. Next, I'm going to cut up a red onion. I like this for the color, and it also adds a, a, you know, a unique flavor. The color really stands out in this dish. So we're gonna rock, chop up our, chop up our onion. Okay. Now we're going to take some extra virgin olive oil. Or you can use water. So water is a, another great thing to incorporate, as we said earlier. So you can put water there as well. Going to turn on our pan. OK. And we'll let that heat for a second. The next thing we'll add is some garlic. Fresh garlic is great. OK. So we'll put some onions, some garlic. And you can also add, you know, different types of onions if you like. So we have that in there. The next thing I'd like to do is let's, let's check on our lentils and see how they're doing. Wow. Now the color, if you zoom in a little bit, you can see the color. Um, it has the different vegetables in it. We have the celery, the carrots, and it's really flavorful, if you see that. And now it's starting to take on more of a brown color because it's starting to absorb the cumin and the curry powder. So that is a great start. And now I'm gonna take a quick step into our refrigerator and see if we have some great other things, to, fresh things to add into our quinoa. So I'm going to add some zucchini. Okay, just gonna chop it like so. I'm chopping it into three different sections and then I'm just gonna rock and chop some more. So we have our zucchini. All right, chop this into three sections. Now I will add some mushrooms. We'll have some mushrooms we'll add inside. And our zucchini. It's important to saute the vegetables separately as the quinoa cooks because this way you can season it effectively and it doesn't impact um, the length that the quinoa needs to cook. So now I'm going to saute the mushrooms, the onions, and the zucchini. Also, I'm going to season it with some salt, a little bit of salt in there to bring out the flavors, just to accent it, not to overpower it. I'm also gonna add some asparagus. So I'll chop my asparagus. It's really good to start incorporating green things into our diet, because they tend to be part of um, the cruciferous vegetables, the family of cruciferous vegetables, and just having green things in our diet really help to bring out different nutrients. There are less calories and they also are a lot healthier for our body. Having whole plant foods is a great thing to um, prevent different health concerns and also to heal certain health concerns depending on what they consist of. When it comes to diabetes, it's really good to have more whole plant foods because it can really help the, the breakage of sugar to be slower and it can also allow your body to effectively digest the food that you're eating as opposed to um, refined foods which, slow, which quickly break down into sugar within the body. 
So it's really good to start having whole plant foods. So we're letting that saute. And I'm also gonna put some chicken style seasoning over it. Alrighty. This gives it flavor. I'm looking over at my lentils and I'm realizing, wow, that smells amazing. All of the different spices and fresh vegetables are starting to come out. I'm gonna add a little bit of cilantro at this point. So cilantro right here, I'm gonna add this to our lentils. So I'm just gonna chop it. Okay, there we go. So I'll put some fresh cilantro in there. Stir this. This is absolutely beautiful. Okay, so while cooking, it's a great thing to also just taste a little bit and see how your flavors are going. You can adjust it if you like. If you say, hey, I would like to add a little more curry powder or hey, I would like to add um, some different nutritional yeast flakes. I, I challenge you to make this recipe your own. So I'm just gonna give it a quick taste. Okay, I like that. One thing that I'm gonna add is a little bit more chicken style seasoning to this. Or salt is a good one, just a little. A salt that I also like is this Himalayan salt right here. I like incorporating that as well. All right, so we have that going. Sauteing our vegetables. And if you find that when sauteing, it takes a little bit longer or you would like um, to add some more, more moisture, I would recommend adding water at this point because it does the same thing. It has the same effect and it's healthier for your body. Okay. So now as that sauteing, we're gonna get started on our last recipe for today, which is cubed tofu. The ingredients call for one pack of tofu cubed, three tablespoons of olive oil, two teaspoons of chicken style seasoning, one tablespoon of nutritional yeast flakes. For our cubed tofu, we'll take a similar principle that we did for onions and we'll just cut straight down and section it into four. And then we'll make a cut in the middle, put it back together, and then we'll just dice straight down. Alrighty. And the great thing about tofu is that it is, it really acts as a sponge, so it soaks up all the flavor from the different ingredients that you put in it. So along with our tofu, we're gonna put our sauce in a separate bowl, which is made out of olive oil, chicken style seasoning, and nutritional yeast flakes. So now in the separate bowl, we're going to mix everything together, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this on top of our tofu. So we have the sauce, and as you can see, it makes nutritional yeast flakes along with its nutritional value of having B12, the fact that it is a protein, it has pr protein properties inside of it. It's a great thing, or essentially it has amino acids. It's a great thing to incorporate it into our tofu. So we're going to take the tofu and we're gonna put it in the big mixing bowl, okay? And now we're gonna check on, it's gonna turn off every other eye. The zucchini looks done. All right, so now we're going to pour the sauce over the tofu, like so. And at this point, you get to make a decision. Life's all about decisions. You can either mix this with your hands, get messy, or you can stir it with a spoon. Since I'm talking to you in this manner, I'm gonna stir it with a spoon. Normally, I would just probably just toss it with my hands. Either one is, works well. So now you just allow this to soak up the different flavors, stir it a bit, and then what you'll do is you'll put this in the oven and let it bake. Okay, so it's marinating right now. You can let it sit for a little bit and then you can let it bake. So now let's check on 
our other items. It looks like the quinoa is about ready. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to pour in our zucchini, our mushrooms, our onions. Okay, and we're gonna stir it in. Now we'll add the amino brags or the liquid aminos. We'll pour that inside. We'll also add chicken style seasoning. Pour that in. And we'll add some salt to taste. Okay. Now I give it a quick stir. And now you have your quinoa. So what you can top the tofu off, so what you'll do is you'll put this on a tray and you'll just let it bake for a couple minutes on each side and then you'll have your fresh tofu. It's delicious, seasoned well, and it's something that you can top on top of, you can put on top of your quinoa and finish it off. So if you look at the quinoa, you'll be able to see all the different colors we have and it's very nutritious. Ultimately, when it comes to um, diabetes, along with other health concerns, having a plant-based diet is a really effective thing to do. Now let's take a look at what we've made today. We've made some delicious quinoa, as you can see, and we also have some lentil soup, which is fresh, full of all the different herbs and spices. It's delicious. It's something you can also take and eat throughout the week. And we also have the cubed tofu, which is seasoned. This is what it looks like after you bake it, which is really delicious. And what I like about all these different meals are they're healthy. And also when I get my tofu, I, I like to get organic because it's healthier for you. It doesn't have non-GMO. Um, so it, it is non-GMO. So the great thing to do is to incorporate healthy plant-based meals into your diet. And having a healthier diet can help you treat the cause and not the effect. A lot of times when it comes to different health concerns, we're always focused on, okay, let's fix what's happening. And we, we tend to have different things that fix the symptoms, but they don't actually f treat the cause. So food and the types of food that we consume can be the cause. But ultimately, thank you so much for trying out these delicious meals. I hope you enjoy it at home. And thank you for joining us at Creative Cooking. Remember to travel the world one bite at a time.